Hello and welcome. This resource will focus on the tricky notion of theory and concepts, the differences between the two and the work they do in research at postgraduate level. Before we delve into theory and the idea of a theoretical or conceptual framework, I want to highlight briefly the notion of your thesis argument developing through interconnected frameworks. From the literature review, or what I prefer to term the conceptual framework, to the conceptual or theoretical framework, which is informed by the kinds of questions your study is asking, and also the field into which it fits, and then to the methodological framework which pulls in the theory to create a plan for the generation and analysis of data so that you can solve or answer the research problem or question that drives your study. In this video, we are zooming in on the middle framework. The point here is that theory does not form a standalone section of the thesis, but works to help you select the suitable research design and create a set of analytical concepts or tools with which you will analyze your data. Concepts and theory are not the same thing, although these terms are often used interchangeably. Concepts are part of theory, building blocks of a sort, but theory is a unified body of concepts that cohere. For example, in social realism, which is a theory, you can have concepts such as knowledge, structure, society, and agency. These concepts can be used in different ways to mean different things, depending on the field you work in and the research you are doing. In the social sciences, you are more likely to need a theoretical framework that works with an overarching theory, such as social constructivism, interpretism, or social realism, and then pulls in and connects relevant concepts that are related to the research problem you are solving. In the natural sciences, it will depend on the kind of research you are doing, whether you have only certain concepts you are working with, such as the concept of a cell that may be understood differently within different theories, or theoretical constructs, such as the theory of relativity. The words theory and concept are understood differently across the natural and social sciences. They do different kinds of analytical work, so it is important not to make any assumptions about what your reader thinks these terms mean. The key point is that whenever you are working with concepts or theory in research, you need to explain how your study understands and will use the concepts or theory to help you analyze your data. This image, drawn by Dr. Jody Martin at the University of Sydney, refers to a common problem, particularly in the social sciences, where students often feel they need a whole theory and all the concepts within it for the research to be valued or valid, especially at PhD level. If you do this, though, your theory chapter may end up reading as an abstract, a descriptive account of the theory and related concepts, rather than an argument for why you have chosen your theory and concepts to address your specific research question. The truth is, you don't need all the theory. You only need as much theory as your problem demands. It may be difficult to know how much this is, especially before you have generated and analyzed data. But the point here is that you need to choose and build a framework for your study out of relevant concepts and connect them together for your readers so they can see what assumptions are you making about what the world is like and how we can come to know about the world as well as what lens you will be using to talk about the small part of the world your research is focused on. Without this clarity, it will be difficult for your readers to understand, for example, how you have analyzed and made meaning from your data, whether you are building a theoretical framework, which is guided by a formal theory, such as social realism or social constructivism, 
or choosing relevant concepts and connecting them together into a conceptual framework that fits your study. Your aim is to enable your analysis to connect your study with others and with a deeper, more abstracted or generalized understanding of the natural or social world. The work that theory or concepts do in research is to provide us with a way of seeing what we are researching through a non-common sense eyes. In other words, working with our data at the abstracted or generalized level enables us to step out of our everyday or common sense or descriptive understanding of our data and enables us to unpack and discuss that data in a sharper, more analytical and more critical ways. Theory helps us to make meaning of the data in relation to the research problem in the field in which you have situated it. Different concepts or theory could enable you to focus in on different aspects of your data and make different arguments about what it means. So choosing the right ones for your project provides you with a powerful analytical tool. Theory and concepts are important in research because they ultimately enable us to connect our data which represents only a small part of the world, with deeper, generalized understandings of the world. And in doing this, theory enables us to say something of value about the natural or social world that contributes to the body of knowledge and community of practice and the research we are part of.